Greetings, brothers and sisters. So I want to say a little bit more about um, merch because a lot of people commented on it. I um, I had this idea for an image a couple of years ago, um, which you guys will see, you know, in the T-shirt. And um, why do I talk about that, you know, later on in uh, when I, you know, roll out the merch and I'm going to put more effort into bringing more people into the channel and things, which I'll talk about um again when the merch is released but it took a while for us to figure out um here's the headline pete davidson goes blonde to match kim kardashian after leaving snl i want to get back to the merch thing in a second here but uh i missed this yesterday that he went blonde and you know kanye went blonde when he had that meltdown when he um yelled at Jay-Z at that concert, right? He ended up not performing and he went on a 20 minute rant and then left. And then next day showed up in rehab. He was like handcuffed to the, he was on a psychiatric hold and then he came out blonde, right? And we've talked about that, you know, with celebrities either getting their head shaved or dyeing their hair blonde. And of course she has the devil's horns here. She just looks, you know, it's kind of almost like an evil there, right? Not almost. (laughs) <laughs> Not kind of. Um, so that is whatever it is. But in terms of the merch, it took us a while just to figure out. And um, it wasn't really all that hard once we put some effort into it. My wife and I said that we were going to make uh, Memorial Day merch Monday and just, you know, make sure that we got something done. And it didn't take that long. Once I realized I could just Photoshop something over for the T-shirt. Um, so the T-shirt's on its way here. and We just want to check it out for sizing and we'll see what it looks like. Um, and there's like a sweatshirt. There's a whole bunch of stuff that goes with it, uh, you know, with this particular merch company. So, um, then I just have to figure out how to get the thing up on my YouTube channel, which I don't think is that hard. And then I'll, you know, put that out maybe in a week or so. And then I want to roll out some other stuff about the channel. I just, you know, made some realizations about some things. Um, so that's the merch stuff, and I'll talk about that more on the other channel as well. Um, but let's get into the headlines. Bunch of things today. Weird thing with Madonna. Something I saw in uh, an article the other day, and then somebody sent me a video, and it's creepy. Like a fashion show, weird fashion show. Um, and stuff to do with, like, I have a great meme, and then just all kinds of weird tech stuff that's happening robot takeover and things that I want to get through, environmental things that are going on. Uh, This guy, Daily Beast, uh, releases apology to Hunter Biden's laptop repairman. This guy is Scottish, um, has eye problems. But, you know, he's suing people because they all, um, they accused him of being a, a Russian spy because that fit the narrative, right? That this had to be, you know, think about this, right? Hunter Biden's laptop gets released, and everybody knows what it is. They know it's his laptop, and it's incriminating as hell. And even if it wasn't his laptop, it has incriminating Hunter Biden stuff on it. It's a monster scandal. A guy who's who's banged his um, his brother's widow. You know, I mean, she the, the story's about that. She got the Secret Service involved. There's a story on there where she thinks he's gonna. Uh, kill himself so she hides a revolver on the top of a trash can and it next to a school and some homeless guy grabs it right like it's just it's, <laughs> and it was next to a high school I mean all the stuff that's going on now and that's the kind of um, gun safety the Biden family practices right that he's dangerous with a revolver she's worried and her decision is to put it in a trash can loaded right where a homeless guy finds it, and the Secret Service got involved. And, you know, so many things, that so many agencies were covering up stuff for that family. And so there's all these incriminating pictures, and he's smoking crack, crack pipe in his mouth. Remember when they were like, no, it's not a crack pipe, it's a meth pipe. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) That's so much better. It might even be worse. And then it comes out, he writes his own book about his crack addiction and that he was getting paid by these companies, foreign companies, to smoke crack, right? And then he impregnated a stripper named Dallas from Arkansas. Well, he, and he didn't even remember it because he was so cracked out. 
And, you know, it now has a stripper baby, Arkansas stripper baby. An Arkansas crackhead stripper baby. So all these things are big stories and funny stories. Comedians should be all over it. But they decide to say, well, let's cover this up and let's say this is Russian disinformation and let's call this computer repairman a Russian disinformation agent. And they knew full well that wasn't true, right? I mean, think about it. Like the, you know, and, it, and this went on for years. I mean, they're just admitting to it now, confirming it's his laptop two years after it happened. And then there's all these distractions going on now, covering up this monster story. I mean, it's just like a condemnation of the media. Camila Caballo calls out rude UEFA fans who sang over her performance. Was it something about their manners? Camila Caballo sang her heart out Saturday to kick off the European Union Football Association 2022 Champions League final at the some kind of place in France. And what happened was they have their own theme songs. Playing back a performance, I can't believe people were singing their team's anthem so loud during the performance. Like, like my team and I worked tirelessly for so long to bring right vibes and give a good show. It follows, in a follow-up post five minutes later, she added, very rude, but whatever, I'm glad you guys loved it. Um, so she performed, and the two um, teams that were in the championship, I don't know who they were and don't care. You know, were singing their own theme songs. They all have their own theme song, their own, you know, team songs, right? Their own anthems. And they sing them, like, throughout the game, right? And they sing them at each other because it's like, you know, there's 50, whatever the percentage breakdown of fans. And so um, they sang both their songs while she was singing her song, uh, lip syncing, we'll show you in a second. And she called them rude, right? That, you know, the fans don't want to hear you sing. They weren't into your performance. They wanted to do their own thing, right? They they were singing while you were singing. So they didn't enjoy it or love it, right? (laughs) If people are singing a different song than you're singing when you're performing, then it's time to walk off the stage because you've lost your audience, right? Like, it's just, you know, don't call them rude. I mean, they are rude. Soccer fans are very rude. You know, it's just part of it. But they didn't invite you here like the fans didn't. And so they thought this would be a good idea. The people who run the, you know, the tournament or whatever it is, right? The soccer federation people, whatever. (laughs) The fans weren't having any of it. They were singing their song while you were singing your song. That's the, you know, that's the definition of bombing, right? If a comedian's up there telling jokes and people in the audience are telling their own jokes, that means they, you know, they think they're funnier than you. (laughs) They enjoy their jokes better than your jokes. They enjoy their song better than your song. And here's a little taste of it. You hear them singing in the back, and and she has a a microphone that's noise-canceling, and you can still hear them singing behind her, right? And so they have, like, they're just, no one's listening because, you know, what they're hearing they're not, you know, they may be over the speakers. There's like this song droning on in the background, but they're all up there singing at each other. You know, each team is, each fan uh, base is singing their team's particular uh, fight song, right? <laughs> That's bombing. This is the epitome of bombing. Okay, so speaking of um, singing when nobody wants you to, Madonna 63 shows off her, shows off her very smooth visage while son David Banda 16 showcases his edgy style in a flowing red dress as they pair attend Davis versus Romero fight. And so this happened. Um, Madonna, you know, looking completely cloned up here. They're trying to make, you know, her plastic surgery look real. Um, There she is with her son. And they're going to this fight here. She's, you know, got her signature crosses because she's a good Catholic. And there they are um, sitting there, walking in here. But then um, then one of my viewers sent me this. Here's some sort of like uh, fashion show where they have this clear belly. I don't know what that is in there. Is that a baby? I don't know what it is. And this person's got like, I don't know, is that supposed to be blood? Some, uh, you know, model. And there's 
Madam expiration date, like just her, she does not look well, right? And why does she keep dyeing her roots black here, right? Why don't she just let her natural blonde color? Um... <laughs> and so there she is. Um, I don't know what that was. There's this bizarre, you know, one of these just creepy, pointless fashion shows. I mean, why, why, you, why do you pay to see this? It's just disturbing. No one's going to wear that. It's not genius. It's just really weird, right? It's just, you know, I mean, what is that? Like, they're boxes. Those were, they're literally put on barcode boxes. And people are sitting there watching this like it's fashion. <laughs> you know, these, the fashion is like the most twisted of all the sort of Hollywood stuff here. There's the pregnant woman. It's the most depraved and pointless and, you know, most twisted. And I mean, it's the worst of the worst of all the evils that are in Hollywood that you consider glamour or whatever it is. The modeling industry and the fashion industry are the worst. I can't believe it's monkeypox season already. I still have my Ukrainian decorations up. <laughs> this is a wonderful meme. <laughs> On so many levels. Because you don't have to have a political position or you don't have to... I mean, your political position really um, doesn't prevent you from finding this funny, right? Because you can be on any side of the aisle or whatever, non-political, left, right, whatever it is, right? And this is just funny. If you, you don't even have to be a truth or anything. You can just take it as we're being having so much thrown at us all the time that, you know, it's funny, right? And then there's all these different levels that you can interpret this in terms of your particular view of uh, whatever it is, right? I can't believe it's monkeypox season already. I still have my Ukraine decorations up. It's just great. This is a, it's just one of those platinum memes that's universal at the same time. It can be interpreted in deeper and deeper levels. So now I have a whole bunch of things that people have been sending me where I found myself, and they were all about like, weird stuff going on with the universe or technology or the planet or whatever. NASA, something weird is expanding universe. Something weird is expanding universe amid Hubble discovery. There is a disturbance in the force. During a recent study on the universe expansion rate, NASA researchers discovered something weird, inspiring, uh, transpiring in the cosmos that might not be able to be explained explained by modern science. The interstellar anomaly comes at the heels of a recent breakthrough discovery of dark energy, a mysterious repulsive force that sped up the universe's expansion, according to the study. With the help of Hubble telescope and the other cutting-edge instruments, <laughs> like, that just sounds funny, right? Like, that's it's a total joke, and... <laughs> Yeah, we're we're cutting edge, right? Our cutting edge, our cutting edge instrument instrumentation. Astronomers had managed to gather the most accurate data yet regarding this intergalactic augmentation metric. Um, I still don't know what the f they're they're saying here. Well, what's the problem? So this is the the anomaly here. However, the increased precision has paradoxically led to the increased ambiguity. I know that someone at the New York Post didn't write this. <laughs> Scientists discovered a discrepancy between the expansion rate as measured in the local universe compared to the independent observation from right after the Big Bang, which predicted a different expansion value. Um, I don't believe in the Big Bang, and so maybe that's the problem here. In the Heartfulness Meditation, there's this idea of the Kashob the um, original stir, the original thought, and human beings' thought force is similar to that thought, the thought that created the universe. And it expanded out from the, the center, but not with any sort of a bang, right? And, you know, you can go, there's some good videos of the explanation of the heartfulness view of the creation of the universe, and it's very interesting, right? Um, it's on, there's some videos on the Heartfulness YouTube channel with this explanation, uh, you know, more, more, but there's a lot of things in science that's just speculation and they 
pretend like they have facts when they don't, right? An entirely new kind of highly reactive chemical has been found in the atmosphere. Every lungful of air we suck down is mostly made up of nitrogen with his generous helping of oxygen and a dash of carbon dioxide. But dusting the atmosphere soup is a whole encyclopedia of different compounds and elements, some of which we can only speculate about. Of course, you know, that's science. Like, at least you're admitting it. One of those mysterious, one, one of those mysterious, 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 I don't know. Don't tell me, don't care, don't need to know. Just, be, just came into focus, however. Chemists have shown that a reactive class of compounds called organic hydroxides, I think I got that one right, exists in the atmosphere. And while these chemicals last only briefly, they could have effects we don't know about. Um, so there's something new in the atmosphere, and, you know, we're breathing it in. They say it's temporary, but, you know, they don't know what this is or what's causing it. So, you know, there's that. And, you know, there's an idea out there I have, and many of you have. Is there anything that's been put into the atmosphere recently that, you know, we can all see <laughs> happening? Entirely new kind of highly reactive chemical is found in the Earth's atmosphere, and it could be triggering respiratory and heart diseases and contributing to the global warming, scientists claim. But then, in the same uh, in the same paper, this is the um, Daily Mail. Right? The other one was Daily Mail as well. World's top climate scientists told to cover up the fact that Earth's temperature hasn't risen for the last 15 years. Leaked United Nations report reveals the world's temperature hasn't risen for the last 15 years. Politi politicians have raised concerns about the final draft, fears that the findings will encourage deniers of man-made climate change. Okay, so let's um let's copy this and see and Google it and see what we find in terms of other non-Daily Mail. So there's the Daily Mail article. Let's go to news here. Um, but it doesn't say anything, right? In terms of, we can go back to the, the all button here. Um, so... They don't have it yet, right? So there's this report. Ted Cruz claimed that there was zero global warming. The last 15 years, there's been no recorded warning. Warming, contrary to all the theories. Um, I don't know if that's fact checked. You got to sign in to Stupid Washington Post. Um, but they, they're not the only the only paper that's covering this is the Daily Mail. If this is a UN report, then WTF, right? You got to publish everything if it doesn't support your worldview. And I believe that there is pollution that is causing harmful effects to the atmosphere. See, there is um, there is a right wing element to the truth community, and this is uh, a big problem because the right wing people are war centered, and you know the right wing of our binary system is war centered and business centered, right? It's run by big business and big war business, right? The military industrial complex. And so the truth community has been warped by that. And I'll talk about that more in uh, maybe some comment videos. I've been talking about the truth community lately. But because of that, there are things that are, you know, pushed out there like pollution is bad, you know. <laughs> but the right wing element of the truth community, no, it's not. It's not having a harmful effect because there's big business being you know, uh, operating on the right side of the equation. And then, of course, the war stuff. Um, and so, you know, pollution is hurting our planet. To what extent, I don't know. But it isn't good. And electromagnetic pollution, which is talked about in Whispers of the Brighter World for Heartfulness, is, you know, the number one thing that's talked about. That that's really a problem. The Wi-Fi and all that stuff. Which, you know, isn't really covered by pretty much anybody anymore. Robot orders increased 40% amid labor shortage. And so that's pretty, you know, the headline says it all here. A report by the Association for Advancing Autom Automation, first cited by the Wall Street Journal, found that their orders worth $1.6 billion were placed between January and March. The surge in demand coincided with the U.S. job openings reaching a record high of $11.5 March, 
uh, in March as employees struggled to find employers struggled to find workers. Um, so this is something that's been going on for a while, and I've covered it in the past. In various, here's another uh, headline: Robot orders surge forty percent as employers seek relief from the labor shortages and more trendy news. And so I've been covering this, I think, for four or five years. The transhumanism thing that came out, you know, was there, and now it's, you know, people just lose interest in it, right? I lost interest in it. But the one thing about robots is, as soon as ro robots can make and fix other robots, which is inevitably going to happen, robots will repair other robots or themselves, and they can create other robots. Once that happens, then human labor force is done, right? Like any sort of mechanical labor. I mean, they have self-driving cars. Imagine self-operating uh, backhoes and self-operating, um, you know, whatever it might be. Could be um, loaders, you know, any kind of machinery, every kind of he heavy machinery. And then building, you know, buildings. I mean, everything that we do manually repairing cars when robots can repair cars. So all the labor aspect of our employment, you know, labor employment, picking fruit, you know, anything to do with physical labor. And when those robots can do that and then also repair themselves, then, you know, there, there doesn't need to be as many people, right? The whole, everybody who's a laborer who does physical labor is, you know, going to be made obsolete, right, by the, you know, by the robot workforce. And we're not that far off from that. And once they do that, there can be massive depopulation because they just, you know, need now sort of a ruling class and then sort of a robot slave class, right? And then maybe some, you know, you know, middle people and, you know, this whatever it is, right? Some people to make up the other aspects of the, the uh, societal needs. But, uh, you know, we're getting close to that. And now with, the, you know, this huge, I mean, so many job openings, which is bizarre, and the idea could be that there's been a lot of people dying that we don't know about. I mean, I can't explain why there's so many job openings, but they're there. We see it, a lot of us see it in our towns and our cities that they're closing fast food restaurants because they don't have anybody to, to uh, work the place, right? A business are closing because they don't have, there's enough employees. Either people are staying home or there's not as many people, right? There's been some sort of Thanos snapping of his fingers type of a situation. And robots is a solution for them. And, you know, it's starting to happen. My wife sent this to me last night. Um, a monument in Tikrit, Iraq, of the shoe thrown at George W. Bush. <laughs> and I was like, can this be real? And it is. But the fact is they took it down. But um, they put this up in, I don't know when it was, something like 2009. Monument to the Bush shoe throwing shines at the Iraqi orphanage. So they put this up at Iraqi orphanage. And there's so much about this is funny. The one thing that's not is that there's these orphans because of America killing a million people in Iraq that people forget about or don't even, you know, ever take responsibility for or think about. Um, but what makes this great is George Bush's reaction. We just showed this the other day. Bam. <laughs> Bam. And they took him out and beat the crap out of him. But now there is a shoe memorial to his honor because that was a great moment, right? That was just a great moment. I don't care what anybody says. So then there's this. Here she is now, Ellen DeGeneres. Season one premiere. This is her first monologue. And this is her last one after she's been disgraced, right? Because she went from being one of the good guys, one of the liked people. Will Smith, Tom Hanks, also in that crowd, who have now been, you know. I mean, I've been covering them since 2015 or 14. I think 15. When I realized there was this subset of Hollywood celebrities that were given the good guy moniker and it didn't, you know, it wasn't true. And Tom Hanks is 
fallen from grace a little bit. Ellen is canceled. And Will Smith, I mean, he's... <laughs> I don't even know what to call what's happened to him. It's like he got nuked, right? <laughs> And watch this. We'll just go through a little bit. Years ago, and I said that this is the start of a relationship. And today is not the end of a relationship. It's more of a little break. It's uh, You can see other talk shows now. It's the end, Ellen. <laughs> what else are you going to do? You're going to do another talk show? show tell me how you're going you're gonna to have a relationship with your audience other than doing stand-up performances, which you suck at, and, you know, TV shows, sitcoms, which you suck at. I mean, you're done. Like, where, where does Ellen DeGeneres' career go from here after this show? Like, there's, you know, I mean, like, what did Oprah do after she ended her show? And she didn't end it in disgrace. <laughs> woo! She's here, woo! She's here, too, woo! With that dude, woo! Woo! Twenty-five years ago, they canceled my sitcom because they didn't want a lesbian to be in prime time once a week. And I said, "Okay, then I'll be on daytime every day. How about that?" Woo! She's running the networks. Woo! What a beautiful, beautiful journey that we have been on together. And if this show has made you smile. Okay, so her staff hates her, right? She abused her staff. That was the big thing. There's Twitch. Woo! I'm going to do some things here. They're dancing. Dancing and hugging. It's a feel-good moment for her getting canceled. It took a year too. This was the longest cancel is cancellation of a celebrity that they she still was on, under contract to go through her whole season, right? <laughs> so she got canceled. That monologue sucked, by the way. There was nothing funny there. Just a lot of, um, you know, this. And so they had this contract, and they couldn't just get out of it. They couldn't just fire her because she didn't really do anything to merit firing and so she had this um one year where everyone knew that she had been canceled but she still was on tv right <laughs> so that was great okay so i got a few more things to cover here but um i missed a great opportunity with this thing with cardi b watching a yacht sink to do this There's two boats and hell was there any time more appropriate in my channel's history to use that meme than when Cardi B is watching a yacht sink and screaming? Um, one of my viewers said that. And, you know, I've missed the boats and hoes like three times where I could have used it. Every Kardashian, um, every time I cover Kim Kardashian or in her gaggle of, um, you know, lady or sisters, her lady friends. I could be using it. And there's lots of times I've missed it. That's one of my primary, if not my first, meme that I used to use a long time ago. So it kind of bummed me out that I missed that opportunity, right? I mean, there it was. Boats and hoes. <laughs> it's just all right there in front of me, and I completely missed it. Um, that's one of the times I get bummed out when someone, you know, not says you missed it because that would be rude and bannable. But when they just say the, the meme, someone wrote just boats and hoes. I was like, oh, that would have been perfect if I had remembered it, but I didn't. So um, here it is. So I just want to say some more stuff about the so-called truth community. Years and years ago, when the truth community was smaller, there was a lot less disinformation. And you could trust what was being said. Alex Jones wasn't as bad back then in terms of his being a shell. And, you know, um, it was just better. You could trust the information you were getting to be a lot more accurate. At least it wasn't completely fake or completely, you know, uh, ass backwards, right? Um, one of the reasons is there's no oversight. Because if you let reporters just say what they wanted to say without any editing process, right? Editors have a job of, you know, not only just sort of fact-checking, but 
uh, making sure that what's in there is accurate. And of course, you know, the mainstream media sucks, but it's completely controlled. But what you have is a lot of people in the truth community, some of them are, you know, fairly uneducated, are not, um, you know, don't have the best integrity. And it's up to them to edit themselves and fact check themselves. A lot of them are emotionally triggered, really upset by everything's going on. And so you got all this information out there that is, you know, not scrutinized by the people providing it, right? And the people receiving it often pass it on. You know, I've been covering this a lot lately. I know I talk about it more, maybe even tomorrow in a longer video. Uh, the people who are, uh, you know, who are, are reading it or watching it are, you know, they have so much confirmation bias. Everyone's so triggered. Everyone's so... Um, emotionally invested in it being true, the stuff that supports their worldview being true, which everyone is anyway, that, you know, you have what you have today. And of course, there's no real media. And so getting to the bottom of things, getting the truth, getting accurate information. And, you know, the problem with if you're listening to right wing truth or stuff, it's always fear based. It's always like, oh, this big thing's going to happen. And you have a lot of people who just predict things and once in a while they get something right and then they use that to, you know, validate their, uh, their legitimacy. And so, you know, it's really a mess out there. The only thing good about it or, you know, it's not necessarily good is that the system can't be saved anyway, so it doesn't really matter. So it just comes down to how you're going to spend your time, right? How you're going to, um, you know, whatever time you have left and energy you have left on this planet in terms of your life and then the system being intact and if there are choices to be made and, you know, in terms of going off grid and going, you know, tribal or something like this or going along with a very controlled system and whatever, you know, I don't know how, what the time frame for all of these things are. So there's going to be choice points and decision points coming. And there's going to be some really bad days coming up. Like there's going to be some days where you know, regardless of what you interpret the cause is for the the event, there's going to be some big events and there's going to be some shortages and things and disruption to people's lifestyles where there's going to be so much collective panic and anger and you'll just, you know, be palpable and you realize things aren't going to be the same. And at least, you know, in the, in the end term, they're not going to be better, right? And so all those things are what people have to prepare for. They have to navigate for these things. Um, and, you know, it used to be like being a truther meant that you had some sort of, um, you know, inside dope, right? You had some, you had the inside scoop, but that doesn't mean that anymore. Now it's just kind of a mess. I mean, I see, I see it, you know, just in terms of my own channel, but I'm pretty sure if I watched other people's videos and saw what else is out there, I would be even you know, more uh, aware of it. It would be even worse. It's worse than I think it is. That's what I'm saying here, right? That um, I think it's a, a lot worse than I think it is. Human beings are not doing very well. And we're weak and whatever, you know, negative um, adjective you could use to describe human beings going into something that's really tough. If you're going to about to face a test, you know, a test that's going to uh, test everything inside you, you're Character qualities, your physical strength, your spiritual strength, your faith, all these things. Like, you know, a big a big time survival test and so much more than that. A, lit, a litmus test for the future of our whether our species is worth saving. And we're not prepared for it all. We have been weakened. You know, it's like everything that we don't need has been given to us, right? Everything that we shouldn't have going on right now we have going on right before this, you know, transitionary period. And it's just going to get worse. People are just getting weaker and weaker. And so, you know, we'll see how it plays out and what that means. And I mean, who knows what's going to happen? Like, you know, until you've faced something, you don't know how you're going to react to it, right? Until you've had an experience, you're not, you know, you could say, you could speculate and say, this is what I think I'd do if I was in that situation. But until you go through something that's completely foreign to all of us, right, especially here in America, but globally. And so there's going to be some things like that, and then we'll see, right? 
I mean, you know, those are the real uh, moments of truth because, you know, looking at what the controllers do, I mean, what the truth community is, is saying that the people that told you or have been in charge of your education, your training, your media, your history, your everything are liars and they've been manipulating you. And so that is a level of awareness. And that, you know, that's true. You've been lied to and manipulated, controlled. And then, you know, what's next, right? You can dive deeper into it and try to figure out their motivation and what they're actually doing and why they're doing it, which is counterproductive, right? You can try to figure out a way out of the system or how to negotiate or navigate it. But very few people in the truth community say, all right, what do I need to know? Like, all right, I now know that I can't trust this institution. And it's no different than not being able to trust a spouse who cheated on you or a parent who lied to you, right? It's like you're growing up in a family, you find out, you know, you think you have a loving, normal family, and you find out your dad's a gangster and your mom's complicit in it, they're murderers and thieves. They've hurt some of your friends and your community by their, you know, behaviors. And you're like, what are you going to do then, right? You've grown up with this idea of you've idolized your parents, you loved your parents, and now you find out that they're not who you thought they were, right? That happens all the time. Like, it's not anything great. People in the truth community think that they're something special. I, I saw this meme. I was going to cover this tomorrow, but... um. It says, get out and get yourself a conspiracy theorist friend. You're going to need one to understand what's about to happen. Well, you know, that's, there's some truth in that, but come on, right? You know, not really, right? It's not really, you know, I mean, it's depending on the level of the person who's, you know, so great. They can explain to you why there's a nuclear bomb. Like, hey, guess what? This is what really happened. Let me explain this to you. You sheeple, my sheeple family and friends come together. We got five minutes before the radiation blast hits us. Let me explain to you what happened. <laughs> you know, like, I mean, you know, yeah, I guess there's maybe there it could be a good thing depending on the level of the truther. But like I said, it's just this idea of you now know that the institution you're 100% dependent on you is deceiving you. And, you know, is murderous. And I mean, most people kind of know that already in one, uh, you know, in one way or another. And so what are you going to do with the information? Where are you going to take that information, right? There's just a lot of things about the truth community now. It's just like, I'm like, are we really still doing this? You know, is this really a thing? You know, why why is this, you know, why? what, what good is continuously thinking about and talking about the same things that we can't change or do anything about and not find a way to, you know, adapt and and use this information for something to better our situation, right? And like the spiritual solution I talk about, finding God and connecting to God internally, the heartfulness meditation and, you know, something that is, um, that will have value. You know, I talked about communal farms and you know, growing food in towns and places like this. I mean, doing things that are productive and you know, positive and not just dwelling on, hey, the what, what, look at the latest lie they told us, right? Look at the latest lie the controllers told us. Yeah, well, you know, how many lies do you need before you move on, right? Like at what point do you go, all right, pretty much everything they say is a lie. I'm not going to listen to them anymore. I'm just going to, you know, do my own thing. But that just doesn't happen, right? It's like an obsession with the filth and the darkness and getting to the bottomless, of bottomless pit of, you know, depravity and deception, right? The double Ds, you know. <laughs> but anyways, um, those are just a few thoughts. Only spirituality will save this world. It's Paramato, definitely pouring from the apocalypse and the ascension. Everyone have a blessed day and be grateful.